Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin, and it's time to dive into yet another class on the Shadowlands Alpha. Now, there is some change since last we did this video, so I'm still on level 50 characters. However, there is a build right now where you can play as level 57 character. I've just spent two hours playing my rogue and trying out a couple other characters on that level 75 thing, and now I can log into any one of them. So after about 30-20 minutes of frustration, I decided, you know what? Let's dive back into the level 50 characters on the alpha. So this isn't going to be the final this product. I'm not even on max level characters. We can't really see all the damage and the proper numbers and tuning hasn't been finalized. But we can still take a look at where monks are at and if they're looking like something fun to play over in the Shadowlands expansion. So in this video, I'll again not max level characters. I tried to see if I can get a level 57 at least, if not a level 60 to show you kind of like what the end game stuff kind of sort of looks like. But I can't because all my characters broke, which is so sad after spending hours into the alpha. But we're going to take a look at the monk. They have class based abilities, which are going to be shared by all three specs and spec specific ones, which is just for each specs. We'll take a look at the talents and a little bit of the gameplay. So we'll start with Windwalker, which is the spec of monk that I actually play a little bit on live. And I actually love Windwalker. I feel like it's such an underrated spec. Not enough people play it and more people should give it a go. However, let's take a look at where monks are at. So in the first row, in the class abilities, we'll start with Blackout Kick. It's still in the game, still going to have a CDR for you if you are Windwalker. It has no chi cost if you're Brewmaster. Chi is only a Windwalker mechanic right now. Normally, there'll be five chi, but with the talent, I have six right now. But yeah, Blackout Kick is still in the game. Crackling Jade Lightning is still in the game. Expel Harm is now... It's kind of like an auto talent that Windwalker have, but also this is a basic ability that brewmasters have so now you have a self heal for 15 second cooldown you can heal yourself once in a while for quite a bit and deal 10 percent of that damage as nature to all enemies so it's kind of a decent aoe ability but it's also a self heal on only 15 energy which is really really cool you have a leg sweep still as a one minute stun for three seconds paralysis 45 second cooldown on a single target provoke no longer has movement increase effect so if you are a bear or a brewmaster, or I guess a new monk right now on Battle for Azeroth, Provoke right now makes the enemy move 50% faster to you, which is weird. It's like the only tank that has this kind of a weird taunt, unless you look in the Death Knights where the grip becomes a taunt as well, and it can kind of just grip enemies to them. But this doesn't work on every enemy, so even big bosses would just kind of sprint over to the brewmaster. And Blizzard removed this. I don't know if this is a buff or a nerf, or how some of you guys may consider it, but... As a rogue, it was never fun to shadow step behind the boss and then just to kind of sprint after the boss right after because the enemy is provoked by my brewmaster. Resuscitate is still going to be your res for your allies. Rolls are still all over the place. You're still going to roll everywhere. Spinning Crane Kick is now base for all three specs and has a slightly different playstyle and usage depending on uh, if you're a Windwalker or Brewmaster or Mistweaver for Woodwalker still has the same effect of spinning crane kick damage, increased by 10 for each unique enemy that you struck with the last Tiger Palm, Black Eye Kick, or Rising Sun Kick, so you being able to kind of spread out damage will actually make this ability better and will also work with your images as they just start attacking everybody all around you. Tiger Palm is still going to do damage, generates Chi, has a chance to make a Black Eye Kick cost no Chi. Touch of Death is still in the game, but it's different. It's no longer part of your burst, it's now an Execute. Exploit the enemy's target's weakest point, instantly killing the creature if they have less health than you. Deals damage equal to 35% of the monk mini uh, maximum health against players and stronger creatures under 15% health. 3 minute cooldown. This is going to change your playstyle from a burst playstyle to rather get the enemy low and then try to see if you can execute him after. This is a 3 minute cooldown and essentially this is kind of a, a nerf but also depends how you look at it. If you're looking to finish off enemies very quickly, like in a Mythic Plus dungeon, this is going to come in handy since in most cases you use Touch of Death once per fight. So this is going to be great. Using it for a good portion of your health or necessarily killing certain dangerous creatures can be really strong. But in PvP, this could also be kind of good when you're just trying to DPS someone down, get them close to execute, finish them off real quick, 3 minute cooldown, the fight is over. But when it comes to a raid, a monk would normally use touch death a couple times throughout a fight, and here essentially you're just going to use it once. So, it is going to be weird, it's going to be different, Blizzard still might adjust this, but they're bringing back more Mr. Pandaria style touch of death. 
Transcendence is still going to be your teleport for 10 second cooldown with Transcendent Transfer on a 45 seconds. Vivify is still there for everybody to heal themselves. Gunflight doesn't work because you don't have flying yet. Zen Pilgrimage will still take you back to the your um well to your what is it called a sanctuary i guess technically it's a sanctuary and you'll still have mystic touch as a passive your damage weakens the target increasing physical damage taken by five percent which is still going to be huge so you will at least want one monk inside of a raid at all times which spec is it going to be well let's take a look at the spec of wind walker with the wind walker we're going to go over abilities that are not talents talking about everything that is baseline what's new what's different Detox still in the game, 8 second cooldown, poisons and diseases will be your forte. Disable with 15 energy is going to have the slow and cast again is going to have a root. Fist of Fury is going to do same thing as single target damage with some off cleave onto enemies. So it'll still do more damage to a single target, channel still and reduced by haste, still cost 3 chi. Flying Serpent Kick will be your gap closer which can be reactivated again to do very little damage but also putting off a pretty big slow on enemies. Great for catching up to enemies or moving around the field. Fortifying Brew is baseline now. So this is your wall and it's two minute cooldown, but it's slightly... Uh, so essentially if you're looking at Mistral Monks who have Fortifying Brew already, it's kind of like it, but slightly uh, weaker. Maximum health is 15% instead of 20 and reduced damage taken is by 15 instead of 20 but a two minute cooldown so for a windwalker monk when you're always looking for defensives hey if you add maybe some of the pvp defenses you can stack on top of each other this is good this is going to be a great reliable defensive for monks to use regularly also invoke zoan chiji and dave are back in the game as a base ability we'll talk about dave in a bit invoke zoan white tiger two minute cooldown and someone's a win and he'll just do a bunch of damage to enemies around you he is pretty squishy so if you're out in the world questing you want to make sure that he isn't the guy grabbing all the aggro but he does a lot of damage and he can cleave now it's going to be a two minute cooldown for you to have regularly as a monk so now you have a passive defensive and a passive uh damage ability that can be used for aoe i mean yeah you're losing out on the big burst with touch of death but a base is a win is it worth it that's something that people will have to decide in later on. Rising Sun Kick is still going to be a good portion of your damage, reduced with haste, uh, cost 2 chi, so it's the same, and reduces the effectiveness of healing on targets, so it still has a mortal strike effect baked into it. Spirit Hand Strike is going to be your interrupt on the 15 second cooldown. Storm Earth and Fire, 1.5 minute recharge. Directly control Storm while Earth and Fire Spirits will mimic your abilities. It's the same thing as live. They'll attack enemies, but you can press the ability again to make them focus on a single target. Touch of Karma, 1.5 minute cooldown. Absorbs all damage taken for 10 seconds. 50% of your maximum health up to a maximum. So 70% of that damage you absorb will also be retargeted to the nature damage of the enemy. So this is more or less the... Touch of Karma that went through the wash of Battle for Azeroth and kind of came out as is. We also have ourselves Afterlife, so as you kill enemies, you'll summon Healing Spheres, which will be great for questing. Um, when you kill an enemy with Blackout Kick, you have a 50% chance to summon a Chi Sphere, granting Chi. Again, great for questing. Combo Strikes is still going to be Mastery, as long as you don't repeat your abilities, you do more damage, which I love, probably my favorite Mastery of all. And Wind Walking will give your allies a little bit extra movement speed increase. Pretty talents, you're not really all that different when you take a look at it. Actually, nothing is different when you think about it. So this makes me think that Windwalkers are not at a state where they are, or at least as far as I remember all these abilities, this doesn't have three charges. It only says three charges because of Solarity. So this is normally two charges. And it, in tooltips before, it almost sounded like it just had one charge on Wowhead or something. But yeah, I think Monks is still going to go through a little bit of a process. Like some people have suggested, what if Fist of the White Tiger was baseline i actually would be okay with it baseline fist with ascension would give monks an extra ability to use so essentially monks aren't really getting changed yet i still think the talents might go through a bit of a wash and i do think fortifying brew together with dampen harm diffuse magic or inner strength could now be good because who took inner strength really it was really just diffuse magic or dampen harm but with ford brew it's going to be quite good and in tr place of your uh, Zuwen, there's just one new talent, Dance of Chi-Chi. It's not new. It's a trade that you're running currently right now. Spinning Chi has a chance to make a Spinning Crane Kick free and deal additional 200% damage. So it's good for Cleave, maybe good for AoE. It's on the same row as Hit Combo, though, <laughs> and Russian Jade Wind. So unless Russian Jade Wind was buffed crazily, 
I don't know how good Dance of Chi-Gi is gonna be. Right now on live, it's awesome. It's a great trait. You wanna at least have one of those. Maybe even two if you get lucky without sacrificing Fist of Fury traits. This was a good trait. But this versus head combo is going to be a weird choice. But I guess you do get a baseline Zoen now, so that makes sense. But also spiritual focus as a passive here. Whirling Dragon Punch, still super fun to use. And Serenity on a 1.5 minute cooldown. So, monks are Windwalker, not really looking all that different when it comes to talents. But the playstyle monks, as you would guess, is just not that different. The only thing that you do is you don't pop touch of death as you get your big burst going. Now you will just get a full Zowen in, if possible. So I would go for a playstyle here with popping images. I'll make sure they're all attacking singular target. We got a sounds GG, so we want to use it because we are going to be spending resources right after. Rolling Dragon Punch immediately. We're just gonna start spending Chi as best as we can. Alpha servers are a little bit laggy, so I'll try to keep up with my abilities as best as I can. But they really are a little laggy. Maybe that's why all my characters are getting DC'd all the time. But as you can see, the playstyle for monks is just not changing that much. The only thing you have that's different is now you can expel harm in order to get yourself a little bit of extra defense. Uh, in terms of the self heal, in, th in case things go bad, maybe in PvP situation. It doesn't really cost too much energy either, only 15. So it doesn't really seem like an expensive ability. Your Zoen is going to do quite a bit of damage, so you don't longer really have a feeling where you kind of have to pack as many abilities as you can during Touch of Death, which takes away a little bit of that stress of the gameplay, which might some people might have maybe not been super happy with. Maybe that's why some people didn't even pick up Monk in the first place. We're going to use our Chi G, which procs quite a bit. I mean, it's procs the same as live, it feels. It doesn't actually say anything in terms of how often procs, but it feels like it does on live. Could be slightly different. But essentially, this is Monk, and it feels really, really fun to play. Very enjoyable, still super good. I love the Fist of Furies, I love the big kicks, I like everything. And Zoen is, I think, a nice defense replacement. With Fortify and Bro also being back on the table, you have a little bit more options in terms of how you want to play defensively, which I think is a great thing. All right, on to the next spec. We'll take a look at the Brew Master, the master of tanking. A very powerful tank in the current meta of Battle for Azeroth. Actually, one of the stronger tanks in the whole expansion from start to finish. But how does it hold up in Shadowlands? Take a look at class-based abilities for your tanking spec monk. Nothing is new in terms of the actual class-based abilities. Tiger Palm does change, so it reduces the cooldown of your bruise, which is the same as life. So there's nothing that really changes it. Still, no movement speed when you provoke. Let's take a, uh, also uh, your spec harm does draw positive chi orbs near you uh, to add increased healing, and it has a shorter cooldown since you know the second tank ability. Take a look at Brewmaster, they changed for quite a bit. The spec is a little different in terms of the focus. So it's going to have mostly the same mechanics as you remember, just the sources of those passives come from other abilities. Take a look at the monk itself. We have Blackout Kick, which will grant you Shuffle. I guess we should talk about where Shuffle is at. So monk normally has two brews. One of them is going to be Purifying Brew, which will take off Stagger. Then there's another brew that normally that's not here this looks like it but it's not the same so that other brew is gone which normally gives you stagger instead they uh, they added shuffle back in cooldown so news i was teaching allow you to shuffle during combat increasing the effectiveness of the stagger so that's essentially what that brew did i think it was maybe iron skin brew uh but what it does is give you passive increase to your stagger uh, generation so the more stagger you have the more uh, damage you can just throw off to that dot that hits you later so you never take a full hit it'll take a portion of a hit and then the other will come back at you as a damage over time ability so now monks combat abilities generate stagger and you maintain stagger through damage and abilities which leaves you with purifying brew as the only brew for you to use regular in rotation and now celestial brew which is slightly different play style so no longer do you just like chug iron brew over and over just to maintain stagger now you get stagger passively and you would now focus on more purifying brew i guess maybe blizzard didn't like that people were not focusing on purifying enough because there were some cases where in a raid boss fight where if your healers just heal hard enough you never have to hit purifying brew you'll just have all that damage staggered off a good monk could purify and should be but some people just weren't doing it because if healers are healing hard enough there's no real need to oppress it so you can just maintain your uh, shuffle forever so 
just a slight change here as we go into the spec uh, this is primarily for brewmaster monks so if you guys are not a brewmaster then this probably is all confusing all to hell blackout kick is going to generate three shuffle uh breath of fire is a shorter cooldown now compared to live so that extra aoe damage you'll put out and damage reduction is going to be nice celestial brew is a new ability uh it interacts with your pure from brew in an interesting way where swig of brew that coalesces purified chi escaping your body uh and basically looks kind of like guard it gives you a shield so this shield gets stronger the more stagger you purify so the idea is you go in take a little bit of stagger damage you purify that stagger and you can use celestial brew in order to deal with some of the damage that goes out particularly magic damage would be really strong but can also be used on physical and this is stronger the more you purify so essentially the shield will be part of your active mitigation you'll be actively trying to press it during bad situations detox still there eight second cooldown poison disease is what you'll be curing 45 brew is seven minute cooldown however you have abilities like your tiger palm that reduce the main cooldown of your brews so essentially it looks like a seven minute cooldown which looks i mean it looks bad but it's actually like a 3.5 I talked to a, someone who actually understands Brewmasters and said on average, and as better as we get better gear, or maybe with a very high haze build, you might be able to uh, really cut it down even further. But yeah, some amount of cooldown is what it starts in, but you do cut it down over time. There's some cooldown reduction with the spec. So turn the skin to stone for 50 seconds, increasing current maximum health by 20, increasing effectiveness of stagger by 10%, and reducing all damage take by 20. So it's a pretty big cooldown. Then there's Dave. This is Invoke Nyozao, the Black Ox. You actually summon uh, the Ox, and you need to have an enemy to summon, but this is Dave. Normally, Dave is on your talents. What Dave will do is he will uh, attack your primary target and frequently stops damaging all enemies around you, so that's going to be AoE damage. And 25% of the... Uh, plus 25% of the stagger damage recently purified, so as you purify stagger, uh, Dave starts doing more damage. While active, 25% of the damage delayed by stagger is instead staggered by Dave. So Dave is going to take a portion of that stagger. So essentially it's a cooldown for damage, but also it's a cooldown defensively. So essentially Brewmasters get an extra cooldown. And why am I calling him Dave? Apparently everybody calls him Dave. So you get Dave baseline where normally Dave would be a talent, but it's also a very strong version of Dave as well. Kex Smash will still do damage, reduce enemies' movement speed, and grand shuffle, and also reduce the cooldown of bruise, which is going to help back to fortifying, also help celestial and purify, which will be your main ability you'll focus on now instead of maintaining two brews, you just have one regular brew. I guess unless you can celestial. Purifying brew now has two charges, so he doesn't have that four charge thing with talents anymore. Clears 50% of the damage delay with stagger. Increase the absorption of your next celestial brew, so you'll be kind of swapping between those as you build up the stagger buff. You'll use Celestial Brew for the big damage decrease. Spear Hand Strike is a 15 second cooldown to interrupt. Spin and Crane Kick also generates you Shuffle. So as you are getting into enemy's face and you hit him with Spin and Crane Kick in AoE situations, whenever you're not Kick Smashing, you will generate Stagger. So if you need Stagger very quickly, I believe it generates Stagger per enemy hit. So you'll use it to basically get effectively very, very quick Stagger. You'll run in, Keg. You'll AoE maybe once just to get the stagger rolling, get your breath rolling, and to a jab. But we'll talk about the play styles of the spec in just a bit. I just wanted to show you more or less like kind of how you would end up using it. Then we have Zen Meditation. 5 minute cooldown, reduces damage taken by 60% for 8 seconds. After being hit with a melee attack or taking another action, will cancel this effect. We have... This buffs or passes are all exactly the same. Your armor is still the same as life. Celestial Fortune is still going to provide you extra bonus heals. Gift of the Ox will give you a sphere to give you quite a bit of a heal. Your master is still all about dodging an attack eventually, whether you stack it with Blackout Kick or uh, by being hit by the enemy over time. Shuffle is your passive we talked about. Stagger is a little different. It no longer has a portion of stagger. Magic damage no longer has stagger, essentially. So, since magic is no longer staggered at all, it used to be, I think, on live, like 35 or 30% of the damage, some portion of the magic damage is actually thrown to stagger, so you can stagger all of it. Essentially, now you'll want to use Celestial Brew to deal with the magic damage. So, Monk should still be a really strong and physical target, but Celestial Brew is essentially going to be your ability, plus other defensives, in order to deal with magic damage without having a passive way of dealing with it, which would probably make Demon Hunters and... Blood DK's tank a little, and Paladin's a little better because they only have 
passive magic mitigation or self heal so monk will be more maybe specialized but i still think it'll be strong clash is still uh it's actually get it back in 30 second cooldown you and the target will charge at each other and where you meet in the middle enemies in that area will also be rooted which can be good but we don't know because it's not really an ability for you to it's a gap closer which can use be as a root can be used to kite enemies in a sense but we don't know if it's going to be good <laughs> some people are like you know what i like the idea the root effect is weird though touch of death at rank three touch of death reduces delayed stagger damage so this essentially clears all your stagger if you're able to touch a death an enemy so sometimes you will actually be able to get in a position where you can and i think brewmastery in a dungeon situation where it's all high risk you could essentially use touch of death as a utility now to deal with stagger which could be cool zen meditation ring 2 if you get it at a higher level 56 zen meditation will no longer cancelled by moving so you'll have a little bit extra mobility as you're reducing the damage that you take which would help out brewmaster monks when it comes to the talents of a brewmaster monk the first row isn't different and neither is the next row when you come to a black ox brew spitfire everything is the same although i heard oh i at least have been told the spitfire is going to be probably less good because the cooldown of breath of fire is shorter now so if that is correct then spitfire essentially just won't have nearly as many uses light brewing is different it reduces the cooldown of purifying brew and celestial brew instead of giving you extra charges your tiger sweep summon a black ox statue and ring of peace are all the same as well 40 bob and weave healing elixir damp and harm all the same At level 45 we have special delivery russian jade wind and exploding keg this one is a artifact weapon ability that's going back to monks as a talent on this row of level 45 exploding keg one minute cooldown hurls a flaming keg at the target, dealing a bunch of fire damage to nearby enemies and causing them to miss their melee attacks for the next three seconds. This could be good in keys. This could be good actually in some of the boss fights too. This is essentially a cooldown for damage, but also is a cooldown as a defensive. So this is actually something worth considering. How good is it going to be in this row? I think Russian Jade Wind might still be really strong, but this has potential. Or at least a bit more potential than special delivery, even though I love the way this ability looks. I do like the idea behind Exploding Keg. Level 50, we have High Tolerance, Celestial Flames, which is different. Drink and Bruise is a 30% chance to coat the monk in Celestial Flames for 6 seconds. Increases damage reduction of Breath of Fire, so it goes from 5% to 10%. And Spinning Crane Kick also causes a Breath of Fire on targets, which could be good in those magic-based situations for the flat damage reduction. I feel like it will be pretty competitive with High Tolerance. And then, of course, there's also Black Art Combo, which is exactly the same as live. So the playstyle for monks isn't really all that different, but it's also it's not that difficult. You just throw down your barrel, get your breath rolling, because that's going to be damage reduction plus damage you do. Try to make sure you're not capped on energy. Trying to keep Blackout Kick on cooldown so you can get your uh, shuffle rolling ASAP. And that's essentially the spec. And then from there it comes down to decision making with cooldowns so right now you'll be ha you'll re really have to be a little more effective with your purifying broom and then trying to get your celestial brews timed right when dealing especially with magic damage as this could essentially save you this is essentially guard now old school guard that monks used to have back in mop but with a little bit of a twist with purifying stagger play style which could essentially be still really strong I feel like Monk is still going to be a really strong tank, plus you also still bring the Mystic Touch. So as a tank, as a Monk, if you're, especially if you're going to be tanking, I think you will be heavily considered as a viable tank. No longer do you have any passive magic damage reduction, but as a tank, Brewmasters have been good all of Battle for Azeroth <laughs> for the most part. So I highly doubt they're going to be bad all of a sudden. Finally, we have the Mist River, which is the one spec I actually have the least experience in. So I made sure to, for every one of these specs, I made sure to always talk to somebody to explain me a little bit of how the spec plays. What's it looking like now? How are the changes looking for Shadowlands from either people that are on the Alpha or people that have read the notes? And what would they say? People that are doing Mythic raiding in the current tier right now. So I made sure to do my... Uh, due diligence here as best as possible so i'll try to cover some all, all the important parts but there's a good chance i might miss a few details uh hopefully they'll be the smallest details ever uh in terms of the basic abilities you have expel harm as a 15 second cooldown ability which does a bit more damage than the other specs so i guess it would be kind of nice it does cost you know quite a bit of mana i mean half thousand which is 
at this level is quite a lot, but it's a self heal that's going to be fairly reliant. We don't really have a lot of other abilities that are changed for Mystery Room in particular. You don't have Spinning Crank turning into a heal or anything. Touch Death is going to be interesting as an ability maybe in keys. But it looks like Mystery Room Monks might end up being one of those healers that just heals from afar. At least at the very beginning of expansion. Take a look at some of the spec based abilities. Detox are going to remove magic, poison and disease. Event of Mist is still in the game with Essence Font. Fortifying Breeze is a little different. It's a little nerfed from 20% health to 15 and recent damage from 20% to 15 as well. Still a two minute cooldown. And you will be able to invoke Yulon the Jade Serpent. So Yulon is essentially what people in the monk community would call the crack bird. It even has exactly the same, uh, well, sound as a crack bird. What it will do is essentially is the bird from the talents. It will just bounce to allies and will try to heal them as often as possible that's all it does it's just a reskinned bird so that's going to be a base ability there was a way to alter it however you can change what uh i guess which what would you call them celestial is that what their actual name of these like beings i guess your pet it will be able to alter it through your talents but essentially you get crack bird for free at least that's how a monk would describe that ability you have Life Cocoon, which is still going to be a big defensive for tanks on a two-minute cooldown. Reawaken as a mass res. Uh, Renew a Mist is still going to be base ability that you'll want to put as many hot on allies as possible. Revival, three-minute cooldown. Big heal and clears all magical poison and diseases off of allies. Rising Sun Kick is still in the game. Does a bit of damage. So the Mist is still going to be something new channel on an ally. Uh, Thunder Focus T is still in the game. Mastery has slightly better numbers in terms of like, you know, they're not super insane like 300, 400% or anything. So they adjusted that a little bit here. Teaching the Monastery is still here and Expel Harm has a buff where Expel Harm, which is your personal self heal, can be cast during Soothing Mist, heals the monk and their Soothing Mist target. So it will give this ability value for 500 mana. Not only are you healing yourself, you also are healing an ally. And if the ability works on an ally, then 10% of the heal should also do damage. So essentially you can have your damage from Expel Harm go off, but also healing a tank. That should also be able to do quite a bit of heal as well, essentially. We don't know how good this will be, but let's take a look at the talents for the Mistweaver. In terms of the talents, there really aren't all that different as far as I am to understand. Now, I know that this first two rows are exactly the same for all three specs, in terms of life cycle, spirit of crane, and mana team, that I believe is all the same. Unless, again, I'm probably missing small detail here. Now that I think it back in my mind, it's like I'm thinking I might be missing a small detail. I'm pretty sure these are exactly round of the mill abilities as they are, except for invoke Chi G the Red Crane. What this does essentially is this is a red crane stance from conflict and strife essence. Which allows the monk to use the honor talent of red crane stance to start doing damage to enemies during this you will do extra damage heal allies uh usually three allies based on the damage you've done so this essentially is this it will replace your uh yulon which is three minute cooldown for a two minute cooldown invoke chi g summon an effigy of chi g red crane for 25 seconds chi g causes you to become immune to all movement impairing effects so you can move around easier increases your physical damage by 25 percent Dealing physical damage causes Chi Ji to heal three nearby allies for 150% of all the damage done. So this essentially could be good in keys, and this could be really, really strong. Having the choice of either, you know, baseline Yulon that will jump around and try to heal allies as much as possible, or going for Chi Ji on a slightly shorter cooldown, uh, less people you are healing, but increasing your damage as a base ability. I mean. It's essentially way of the crane, just as a two-minute cooldown. I believe you won't be able to have both of these as an honor talent, but this could be essentially really, really good. You have focus, uh, focus thunder T, upwelling, and rising mist, all the same, except this one is seems to be the nerfed version compared to what we have on live. It sends the hots by two seconds instead of four, so that's interesting. I wonder if Blizzard will go ahead and buff this back up, or if it will keep the nerf version. But it looks like most monks will end up taking upwelling at least the very beginning of the expansion now the healing for monk is and this is something i actually had to have me, have me explain just to make sure i know what the hell i'm talking about or at least in layman's 
you're going to maintain your renewal mist from as many allies as you can and you're going to try to heal allies as much as possible with it you're going to maintain through the mist on a tank if a bunch of allies are taken damage you can start to pay on vivifies during through the mist in order to get a bunch of emergency heals off or you can go for a costly heal on developing in order to heal the main tank and you'll maintain your dots or hots all over the place and then you'll use essence font for raid healing and that's essentially it you'll just run around and heal allies as much as possible essence font will also have gust of miss effect twice which is your mastery which is if an ally is your primary target or if it has a certain hot then it will do extra healing and it kind of I, I don't believe it sags but essentially essence font will also double up if you can get a bunch of hots all over the place so as you're spreading your renew and miss it should do a great raid healing here you essentially are going to go back to the old school build what some of you guys on mystery words actually like just sitting in the back and healing allies from afar which is effective technically monk still counts as a i believe right now melee healer which means there's certain mechanics that will deal as a melee which means there's certain mechanics that will usually target a range class but they don't and that's going to be my video on monks when it comes to shadowlands i tried to have as much collaboration in this video as i could from people that actually play monk and know what they're talking about so then when i'm able to make this video i can kind of translate what they said to you guys as best as i could looking like monk as a class is going to be very strong however the spec of choice whether you play brewmaster woodwalker or mistweaver is going to be interesting I like the fact that Windwalker is staying more or less the same with a slight adjustment for the toolkit. I really like where Brewmaster is going in particular. It seems like a very solid tank and the changes aren't making it worse by any measure. Mistweaver essentially is just going backwards to where it was at the very beginning of the expansion. We don't know if they're going to be exceptionally good or maybe top end healer or anything like that. But as long as they're fun to play and maybe they get maybe a couple more changes to talents, maybe some more updates and Blister is able to balance their abilities or maybe the Covenant abilities will be kind of where Mistweavers will shine. We never really know. But for now as they are, they just kind of took a step back to where they used to be. We just don't really know if it's going to be good or not for them. But if there's a playstyle you like or any of these playstyles do you find enjoyable, definitely might want to start leveling a monk right now. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And I'll see all of you guys in another video.